The raven's cry echoed through the misty grounds of Ravenswood Academy, a sound of mourning that sent a chill down Samantha Ray's spine as she hurried up the stone steps. The summons had come just past midnight, delivered by a spectral messenger only she could see. Her mother Eliza, headmistress of the elite school for witchcraft, was dead. Murdered in her own chambers. Samantha's heels clicked a staccato rhythm as she navigated the shadowed halls, portraits of ancestral witches watching her passage with solemn eyes. Magic hummed in the very walls, ancient power infused in every brick and rafter, but tonight it felt different. Tainted somehow. A shiver traced down her spine. She burst into her mother's study, and the scene within stopped her cold. Eliza Ray lay crumpled on the Persian rug, once vibrant emerald eyes staring sightlessly at the vaulted ceiling. Her silver hair fanned around her head like a halo, a startling contrast to the pool of crimson steadily seeping into the fibers beneath her. Mother, Samantha choked out, dropping to her knees. With a shaking hand, she reached out to close those vacant eyes. Eliza's skin was already cold to the touch. As her fingertips brushed her mother's lids, a shock of visions ripped through Samantha's mind. Power, dark, and hungry, ripping, tearing, devouring. A flash of obsidian eyes, glittering with malice. And blood, so much blood, an ocean of it threatening to pull her under. With a ragged gasp, Samantha wrenched herself back to the present. She knew those eyes, that insidious darkness. Darius Blackthorn Dot. Her stepbrother. The warlock who'd once brought her to the brink of ruin with his cruel tutelage and crueler affections. A man she'd vowed never to let into her heart, or her power, again. Rising on unsteady legs, Samantha circled the room, searching for clues. Darius had been banished from Ravenswood long ago, his wand snapped, his name stricken from the records. What could have drawn him back from the shadows? And why now, with the rite of ascension fast approaching? The rite. A shudder rippled through her. In one week's time, Samantha would kneel before the council and accept the mantle of leadership, taking her mother's place as headmistress, pledging her magic to the protection of the realms. An oath that would grant her immense power and forever sever any chance of the life she truly longed for. A life of freedom, of choice. A life with him. Unbidden, a pair of hazel eyes, flecked with gold and eternally etched in her memory, rose to the surface of Samantha's mind. Rowan Ashthorn. Her first love. Her deepest regret. The warlock who'd stolen her heart during their years as apprentices, only to shatter it when he'd betrayed her trust and abandoned her. She'd thought she'd put him behind her, burying their past in the same locked room of her heart, where she kept her grief and her rage. But, with her mother's death, it was all bubbling to the surface like a potion about to boil over. A grim resolve settled over Samantha as she gazed down at Eliza's body one last time. She would find who did this, and she would make them pay. Even if it meant ripping open old wounds. Even if it meant facing the two men who had the power to bring her world crashing down. The silver athame in her mother's slackened grip caught her eye, its jeweled hilt winking in the guttering candlelight. Crouching, Samantha gently pried it from cooling fingers. The blade was still wet with blood, Eliza's life force smeared along the razor-sharp edge. Righteous fury blazed in Samantha's chest as she rose, the athame gripped tight. Let them come, the darkness and its disciples. She was a ray witch, a daughter of the raven. She would meet them with steel and magic, and the avenging cry of her namesake. In the distance, thunder rumbled, and the ravens screamed, their calls blending into one eerie symphony. A storm was brewing over Ravenswood, and Samantha would be at its center. The only question was, when the final lightning struck, who would be left standing? The funeral was a somber affair. Black-clad mourners gathered beneath a gray sky that threatened rain. Samantha stood at the front of the assembly, a lone figure in a sea of bowed heads and whispered condolences. Her eyes remained fixed on the pyre where her mother's shrouded form lay, wreathed in ivy and raven feathers. As the flames licked higher, consuming all that remained of Eliza Ray, Samantha felt a presence at her back, a prickle of awareness, a stirring of magic. 
Her fingers tightened on the silver athame concealed within her sleeve. I'm so very sorry for your loss. That voice, smooth as honey and rich as sin. A voice that had haunted her dreams and chased her into waking. Slowly, Samantha turned, steeling herself for the impact of those hazel eyes. Rowan Ashthorne stood an arm's length away, tall and devastating in expertly tailored black robes. A hint of stubble shadowed the sharp line of his jaw, and his dark hair was longer than she remembered, brushing his collar. But his eyes, they were exactly the same. Mesmerizing, penetrating, seeing straight into the heart of her. Once, the intensity of that gaze had set her soul on fire. Now, it filled her with an icy rage. How dare you? Samantha's voice shook, but whether from anger or grief, she couldn't say. How dare you show your face here, today, of all days? Something flickered in Rowan's expression. Pain, perhaps, or guilt. But it was gone before she could decipher it, replaced by that familiar, inscrutable mask. She was my mentor too, Samantha. My friend. She was my mother. Samantha snapped. And you lost the right to mourn her the day you betrayed us. Betrayed me? Rowan had the grace to flinch at that, a muscle ticking in his jaw. Samantha, if you just let me explain me, there's nothing to explain. She turned her back on him, the movement deliberate, dismissive. We have nothing left to say to each other. The rite of ascension is in six days. I'm not going anywhere. The implication hung heavy in the air between them. He knew she couldn't refuse him, not with the council watching. Tradition dictated that all warlocks of age be present to bear witness and add their magic to the ritual. Even a disgraced son of Ashthorn. Samantha's blood turned to ice in her veins. Six days. Six days with Rowan under the same roof, stirring up memories best left buried. Six days with a killer on the loose and her emotions balanced on a knife's edge. The raven's cry sounded again, harsh and mocking in the leaden air. A harbinger of dark times ahead. Drawing a steadying breath, Samantha squared her shoulders and strode towards the castle, the athame a comforting weight against her wrist. Raven's wood loomed before her, ancient stones steeped in secrets, its spires piercing the clouds. The sentinels in the carved oaken doors watched her approach with sightless eyes, bearing silent witness to her pain. Once inside, she paused in the cavernous foyer, acutely aware of the emptiness, the lack of her mother's living presence. Eliza had been the heart of Ravenswood, as vital as the magic thrumming in the foundations. Without her, the halls felt hollow. Cold. Die. A flicker of movement caught Samantha's eye a shadow detaching itself from the deeper pools of darkness beneath the grand staircase. Hello, sister. Darius Blackthorne stepped into the guttering light of the wall sconces, a study in black and midnight. He moved like oil made flesh, smooth and inky, and leaving a slick feeling of revulsion in his wake. I'm not your sister, Samantha bit out from between clenched teeth, and you have no right to be here. Oh, but I do. Darius smiled a slow, insidious curving of lips. The prodigal son returned to bear witness to the crown, passing to the next generation. His obsidian gaze crawled over her, invasive and repulsive. Such a pity it won't be staying in the family. Nausea churned in Samantha's gut. If you had anything to do with my mother's death, I'll wow. You'll what? Darius took a step closer, then another, until barely a hand's breadth separated them. His magic crackled over her skin, oily and cloying. What exactly will you do, little witch? Samantha remained rooted in place, refusing to give even an inch. But her heart raced traitorously in her chest as memories of cruel hands and crueler words crashed over her. Words whispered in the dark as Darius sought to bend her to his will, to break her, to ah, uh, get away from her. Rowan's snarl cut through the haze of fear, and then he was there, inserting himself between them, a living shield. One hand hovered near the wand at his hip, the other reached behind to find Samantha, warm fingers wrapping around her wrist in silent reassurance. 
Darius's eyes flashed, but his cold smile never faltered. Rowan, dot, dot, tuned. I heard you were back from your little sabbatical. How wonderful that we're all together again. Just like old times. The hand on Samantha's wrist tightened minutely, and she felt the answering kick of Rowan's pulse. Old times. When Rowan had been her everything, and Darius a vicious specter on the edges of their happiness. Always watching, waiting for his moment to strike. Leave, Darius. Before I make you. Rowan's voice remained steady, but Samantha could feel the tension radiating off him in waves. Darius's smile sharpened, baring teeth. For now. Fun. His gaze cut to Samantha, dark with promise. But we're far from finished, you and I. With a mocking bow, he melted back into the shadows, leaving a chill in his wake. Samantha released a breath she hadn't realized she'd been holding, and Rowan turned to face her fully. Are you all right? His eyes searched her face, concern and something fiercer warring in their depths. She nodded stiffly, stepping back to put distance between them. The loss of his touch shouldn't have ached the way it did. I had it handled. Samantha. Don't. She held up a hand, hating the way it trembled. Just don't, Rowan. I can't do this with you. Not now. Now. Silence stretched between them, heavy with all the words left unsaid. Rowan looked like he wanted to argue, but thought better of it. With a curt nod, he turned on his heel and stalked away, disappearing into the labyrinthine halls. Alone once more, Samantha pressed a hand to her chest, feeling the erratic thrumming beneath her breast. Six days. She had six days to unravel the mystery of her mother's murder and secure her place as headmistress. Six days to shore up her defenses against the two men who threatened to tear down everything she'd built. But even as resolve hardened her spine, Samantha couldn't shake the feeling that something far more insidious was at play. A darkness beyond even Darius, pulling the strings from the shadows. And if she wasn't careful, if she let her guard down even for a moment, it would consume her whole. The silver athame pulsed against her wrist as she climbed the stairs to her chambers, a silent promise. She would avenge her mother's death and claim her birthright, no matter the cost. But as she passed the portrait hall, the eyes of her ancestors heavy upon her, Samantha couldn't suppress the shiver that raked down her spine. Because in the dance of flame and shadow, the figures in the frame seemed to move, to whisper. Doom, they said. Doom is coming. And Samantha feared they were right. The dream came again that night, as it had every night since her mother's death. Samantha stood in a field of ravens, their beaks stained crimson, their eyes gleaming like chips of obsidian. At her feet lay a body, broken and bloody, but when she knelt to turn it over, to see the face, she woke, choking on a scream. Heart hammering. She sat up in bed, the sheets tangled around her legs. Moonlight spilled through the leaded glass windows, painting the room in shades of silver and shadow. The ancestral portraits watched her from the walls, their whispers a susurrus in the dark. Just a dream, Samantha muttered, pushing damp hair from her forehead. But even as she said it, she knew it was a lie. In the world of magic, dreams were never just dreams. They were portents, warnings. And this one felt like a noose tightening around her neck. Knowing sleep would not return, Samantha rose and donned a robe, the silk cool against her feverish skin. She needed air, space to think. Slipping from her chamber as she padded barefoot through the sleeping castle, the wards parting before her like mist. Her path took her up, 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 until she emerged onto the astronomy tower, the highest point in Ravenswood. The night sky stretched above her, an infinite canvas of stars, and for a moment, Samantha let herself imagine a different life. A life where she was free to chart her own course, to follow her heart instead of the path laid out for her. Trouble sleeping? Samantha spun, the robe flaring around her legs. Rowan leaned against the parapet, his hair ruffled by the breeze, his eyes mirror bright in the moonlight. He looked achingly familiar, and altogether foreign, a figure from a half-remembered dream. What are you doing here? 
Samantha hated the breathless catch in her voice, the traitorous flutter beneath her ribs. Rowan pushed off the wall and took a step towards her, then another. I could ask you the same thing. She lifted her chin, refusing to back down. It's my tower. I have every right to be here. Ah, but it's not yours yet, is it? Rowan's smile held a ghost of its old warmth. Not until the right. The reminder was like a bucket of cold water, dousing the flicker of something that had kindled in Samantha's breast. She turned away, gripping the parapet. Why are you here, Rowan? Why now, after all this time? For a long moment, there was only the whisper of the wind and the distant cry of a raven. Then, a sigh, heavy with regret. I made a mistake, Samantha. When I left, I thought I was doing the right thing. For both of us. Samantha whirled to face him, anger sparking in her veins. The right thing? Abandoning me, with no explanation, no goodbye. That was the right thing. Pain etched itself into the lines of Rowan's face. I was trying to protect you. From Darius. From the council. From, from myself. I didn't need your protection, Samantha snapped. I needed you. The words hung in the air between them, raw and bleeding. Rowan looked as if she'd struck him, his eyes wide and wounded in the silver light. I'm sorry, he whispered. I'm so, so sorry. And there it was, the absolution she'd craved for so long. The acknowledgement of the hurt he'd caused, the wounds he'd carved into her heart. But instead of the relief she'd expected, Samantha felt only a hollow ache, because it was too late. The girl who'd loved him, who'd thought him her forever, she was gone, as surely as her mother. In her place stood a woman hardened by loss and betrayal, her heart encased in ice. Sorry isn't enough, Samantha said, and was proud when her voice didn't waver. Not anymore. Rowan opened his mouth. But before he could speak, a gong sounded in the depths of the castle, deep and sonorous. Once, twice, three times, Samantha's blood turned to ice in her veins. The wards. Something's breached the wards. They moved as one, racing down the winding stairs, Rowan's hand finding hers in the dark. Despite herself, Samantha clung to him, fear a living thing in her throat. The wards of Ravenswood were ancient, impenetrable, for something to break through. They burst into the entrance hall to find chaos. Students huddled in their nightclothes, eyes wide with terror. Professors shouted orders, wands drawn, magic crackling. And there, in the center of it all, a figure, cloaked and hooded, hovering a foot above the flagstones. Who are you? Samantha demanded, stepping forward. She could feel Rowan at her back, his presence steadying. How did you get past the wards? The figure laughed a sound like bones scraping together. Foolish girl. The wards answer to me as they have always done. With a flick of a skeletal hand, the figure threw back its hood, and Samantha felt the world tilt beneath her feet, because staring back at her, eyes black as a starless night, was a face out of nightmare. A face she knew as well as her own. Mother? The word left her lips in a breathless rush a prayer and a curse all at once. But no, this wasn't Eliza Ray. This was a twisted mockery of the woman who'd raised her, taught her, loved her. This was a husk, a shell animated by something far darker. Necromancy. Rowan breathed from behind her, horror and revulsion thick in his voice. Someone's raised her shade. The thing wearing Eliza's face smiled, a gash of darkness in the pale oval of its face. Very good, Rowan. You always were the clever one. Its gaze shifted to Samantha, avid and hungry. And you, my daughter. My blood. My legacy. Did you think you could escape your destiny? Samantha's hand shook as she raised her wand, leveling it at the creature's heart. You are not my mother. No. It drifted closer, black robes swirling. But I made you, Samantha shaped you in my image. You are more like me than you know. By the rose in Samantha's throat? I am nothing like you. Like this. This abomination. 
The shade laughed again, a scrape of dead leaves over stone. We shall see. And with that, it exploded into a swarm of ravens, black wings buffeting the air, beaks and talons flashing. Students screamed, scattering, and professors threw up shields of shimmering light. But Samantha stood frozen, paralyzed by the sight of her nightmares made flesh. Samantha! Rowan's shout jolted her into action, and she slashed her wand through the air, sending a blast of silver fire into the flock. Ravens fell, charred and smoking, but more took their place, an endless tide of darkness. They were losing. Samantha realized with a sinking certainty. The ravens were too many, the magic animating them too strong. They needed a weapon, a way to cut off the darkness at its source. They needed... The Atham. Her mother's silver blade, imbued with generations of ray magic. It was the only thing that could banish a shade, sever the tie between living and dead. But it was in her chambers, locked in a warded box. And the ravens were between her and the stairs, a seething mass of claws and hate. Rowan's hand found hers again, his palm slick with sweat. Together, he said, and the word held a world of promise. Samantha nodded, throat tight. Together, as they'd once been, before the secrets and the lies had torn them apart. Drawing a deep breath, she gathered her power, letting it build in her veins, in her bones. Beside her, Rowan did the same, his magic thrumming in counterpoint to her own. And as the raven's dove, shrieking, they unleashed it in a blinding wave of light and heat. The flock scattered, screeching, and Samantha and Rowan ran, hand in hand, leaping over fallen bodies and smoldering feathers. They reached the stairs, taking them two at a time, the ravens regrouping behind them in a furious whirlwind. Samantha's chambers were a shambles. The door blasted off its hinges. But the box was there, untouched, the runes on its surface glowing softly. She lunged for it, fingers scrabbling at the latch, and the athen fell into her hand like an old friend, the silver warm against her skin. Samantha. Rowan's voice held a note of warning, and she turned to see the ravens pouring through the doorway, blotting out the light. At their center, the shade hovered, its face a mask of rage. Did you think it would be that easy? It hissed. Did you think you could defeat me with a mere trinket? Samantha raised the atham, its edge glinting. This is no trinket. This is my birthright. The power of the ray bloodline. The... Her words died in her throat as the shade laughed, high and wild. You foolish child. You know nothing of your birthright. Nothing of the power that flows in your veins. It raised a hand, and Samantha felt an invisible fist close around her throat, lifting her off her feet. The athame clattered to the floor, and spots danced before her eyes as she clawed at her neck, desperate for air. Samantha! Rowan's cry reached her as if from a great distance, and through the encroaching darkness, she saw him lunge for the blade, saw his fingers close around the hilt. And then the world exploded in a maelstrom of feathers and shadow, and Samantha knew no more. Consciousness returned in fragments, jagged shards of light and sound that cut through the thick fog enshrouding Samantha's mind. She was lying on something hard and cold, the tang of blood sharp in her mouth. Every breath sent a lance of pain through her chest, and when she tried to move, to sit up, she found she couldn't. Couldn't twitch so much as a finger. Panic surged through her, hot and sharp, and she frantically reached for her magic, for the comforting thrum of power that had been her constant companion since childhood. But there was nothing. Just a hollow emptiness, an aching void where her magic should be. Ah, you're awake. The voice was familiar and yet not. A twisted echo of the one that had once sung her lullabies soothed her fevers. The shade glided into view. Eliza's features contorted into a cruel mockery of a smile. Just in time for the main event. Samantha tried to speak, to demand answers, but her tongue lay heavy and useless in her mouth. The shade chuckled. A sound like dry leaves skittering over a grave. Don't bother trying to talk. Or move. That paralysis spell is one of my better creations, if I do say so myself. 
It leaned closer, black eyes glittering with malice. I want you conscious for this, Samantha. I want you to see, to understand, the true extent of your failure. A wave of its hand, and the room swam into focus. They were in the great hall, the enchanted ceiling mirroring the storm raging outside. Rain lashed the windows, lightning painting the scene in stark flashes of white. And there, in the center of the room, Rowan Dot. He hung suspended in a cage of dark energy, his head lolling, his face a mask of blood. The athame lay at his feet, just out of reach, taunting in its proximity. Samantha's heart seized in her chest. She wanted to scream, to rage, to tear the shade apart with her bare hands. But she could only watch, helpless, as it drifted over to Rowan's prone form. He's still alive, if you're wondering. It traced a finger down Rowan's cheek, leaving a smear of black ichor in its wake. I thought about killing him, but this? This is so much better. It turned back to Samantha, its smile widening. You see, my daughter? I've been watching you. All these years, all this time. I've seen the way you look at him, the way your heart quickens when he's near. He is your weakness, your Achilles' heel. The shade leaned in close, its breath a fetid whisper against Samantha's ear. And now, I'm going to make you watch as I destroy him. Piece by piece, memory by memory, until there's nothing left of the man you love. Until he's just a shell, a husk, like me. Tears burned in Samantha's eyes, hot and stinging. This couldn't be happening. This had to be another nightmare, another horror, conjured by her fractured psyche. But the pain was too real, the fear too visceral. This was happening, and she was powerless to stop it. The shade raised its hands, black energy crackling between its palms. Rowan's body jerked, his back arching as a scream tore from his throat. The sound ripped through Samantha like a physical blow, shredding her heart, her soul. Please, she tried to say, but the word was a soundless shape on her numb lip. Please, don't do this. But the shade just laughed, high and wild, the sound swelling to fill the hall. Rowan screamed again, and again his agony a tangible thing in the charged air. And Samantha could only watch, tears streaming down her face, as the man she loved was unmade before her eyes. Memories rose unbidden, snapshots of a life half-lived. Stolen kisses in shadowed alcoves, fingers intertwined beneath the table at council meetings. The way Rowan's eyes crinkled when he smiled, really smiled, just for her. The heat of his skin against hers, the rasp of his stubble, the taste of his magic on her tongue. All of it, every precious moment, every treasured heartbeat, slipping away like sand through an hourglass, leaving only dust and ashes in its wake. And in that moment, something shifted inside Samantha. A tectonic plates, realigning. A fault line cracking open. Rage and despair and love, so much love, coalescing into a white-hot spark at the very core of her being. She couldn't lose him. Win and lose him. Not like this. Not to this twisted perversion of everything she held dear. If Rowan was her weakness, then he was also her strength. The ember that kept her fire burning, even in the darkest of nights. Drawing on reserves she didn't know she possessed, Samantha pushed against the paralysis spell, feeling it bend, then crack, then shatter like spun glass. The shade whirled, shock and fury contorting its features, but Samantha was already moving, lunging for the athame that lay just out of reach. Her fingers closed around the hilt, the silver flaring to life at her touch. Power surged through her, molten and searing, the magic of her bloodline, her birthright. With a wordless cry, she brought the blade down in a shining arc, cleaving through the bars of Rowan's cage like they were nothing more than smoke. He collapsed into her arms, a dead weight, and she lowered him gently to the floor, cradling his head in her lap. His eyes fluttered open, hazy with pain, but when they focused on her, Samantha saw the spark, the glimmer of the man she knew. The man she loved. Samantha!
he rasped, his hand coming up to cup her cheek. You, you. But before he could finish, a blast of dark energy sent them both flying, slamming into the far wall with bone-breaking force. Samantha struggled to her feet, the athame still clutched in her hand as the shade advanced, its form swelling, darkening, until it seemed to fill the entire hall. Foolish girl, it snarled, Eliza's face melting, running like wax, to reveal something ancient and terrible beneath. You think you can defy me? I, who have conquered death itself. It raised a hand, fingers curling into claws, and Samantha felt an invisible force seize her, lifting her into the air. The pressure was immense, crushing, and she could feel her ribs creaking, her lungs straining for breath. But even as spots danced before her eyes, even as the darkness closed in, Samantha tightened her grip on the athame. This was her mother's blade, imbued with the strength of generations. This was her legacy, her truth. With the last of her strength, she brought the athame up, plunging it into the center of the shade's mass. Silver fire exploded from the point of impact, searing, blinding, and the creature let out an unearthly shriek, dropping Samantha to the floor. She landed hard, the breath leaving her lungs in a rush, but she was already scrambling to her feet, the athem held before her like a beacon. The shade writhed, flames licking along its form, consuming it from the inside out. This isn't over, it hissed, Eliza's voice garbled, distorted. You can't escape your fate, Samantha. The darkness will have you one way or another. And with a final shuddering scream, it burst into a swarm of ravens, the birds scattering to the four winds with raucous cries. Samantha stared after them, chest heaving, the atham trembling in her hand. It was over. They had won. But as she turned to Rowan, as she took in the ruin of his face, the blood soaking his robes, she knew the true battle was just beginning. Because the shade's words rang in her ears, an insidious whisper she couldn't shake. The darkness will have you, one way or another. And deep down in a place she dared not acknowledge, Samantha feared they might be true. In the days that followed, Ravenswood existed in a state of hushed unease, the halls echoing with whispers of the horrors that had unfolded. Rowan lay in the infirmary, his wounds knitting slowly under the careful ministrations of the healers. Samantha barely left his side, holding his hand, willing him back to life, to her. But even as he mended, even as color returned to his cheeks and breath to his lungs, Samantha couldn't shake the feeling of impending doom that dogged her steps. The shade's last words played on a loop in her mind, a sinister refrain she couldn't silence. The darkness will have you, one way or another. She threw herself into preparations for the rite of ascension, determined to prove the specter wrong. She would take her mother's place as headmistress, would wield the power of her lineage like a sword and shield. She would protect Ravenswood and everyone in it from the encroaching shadows. But the more she studied, the more she learned, the more dreadful certainty took root in her heart. The shade had been right. The darkness was coming for her, and it wouldn't stop until it had claimed her body and soul. It was there in the whispers of the portraits, in the knowing glances of the professors. It was there in the way her magic sometimes sputtered and sparked, escaping her control like a wild thing. It was there in the dreams that haunted her, night after night, visions of a future steeped in blood and shadow. And it was there, in the secret chamber she discovered, hidden deep beneath the school. A room filled with ancient tomes and forbidden artifacts, all bearing the same symbol. A raven, wings outstretched, talons clutching a human heart. The symbol of her family. The mark of the Blackthorns. With trembling hands, Samantha leafed through the brittle pages, a chill settling in her bones as the truth unfolded before her. Her mother hadn't been the first Blackthorn to fall to darkness. No, the rot went back generations, a twisted legacy passed from mother to daughter, a curse that could never be broken. For the Blackthorn women were not just witches. They were vessels, conduits for a primal, insatiable force that hungered for chaos, for destruction. A force that would stop at nothing to be made flesh. And now, 
It had chosen Samantha. She could feel it, in the marrow of her bones, in the rush of her blood. A seductive whisper, a siren song, urging her to let go, to give in. To embrace the power that was her birthright, the destiny she had been born to fulfill. It would be so easy to surrender. To let the darkness take her, mold her, wield her like a weapon. She could have everything she'd ever wanted. Power, respect, Rowan. All she had to do was say, yes. But Samantha wasn't just a blackthorn. She was a ray, a daughter of light and love. She had her father's strength, her grandmother's wisdom. She had the athame, a symbol of the choice that lay before her. And she had Rowan. Rowan who believed in her, who loved her for all that she was, and all that she could be. Rowan, who would stand with her, fight with her, even if it meant his own destruction. With a cry that was equal parts anguish and exultation, Samantha raised the atham, the silver blazing like a fallen star. She would not be a pawn in this game. She would not be a vessel for an ancient evil. She would forge her own path, ride her own destiny. Even if it killed her. The blade flashed down, slicing her palm, and blood welled, spilling onto the stone floor. Samantha chanted the words she had learned, the incantation of binding and banishment, pouring every ounce of her will, her love, into the spell. The chamber shook, dust raining from the ceiling, and a howling wind tore through the room, scattering papers and toppling candles. In the center of the maelstrom, a vortex opened, a swirling mass of shadow and flame, and something vast and terrible pressed against the edges of reality, straining to be free. No! Samantha shouted, her voice raw, her magic a searing brand. I won't let you in. I cast you out, by blood and bone, by heart and home. I am Samantha Ray and I choose. Light. With a final wrenching effort, she thrust the athamine into the heart of the vortex, silver meeting shadow in a blinding flash. The creature screamed, an unearthly sound that shook Samantha to her core. But she held fast, pouring everything she was, everything she would ever be, into the blade. And then, silence. Stillness. The vortex collapsed in on itself, winking out of existence, and Samantha crumpled to the floor, the athane clattering from her nerveless fingers. It was over. She had won. But as she lay there, blood pooling beneath her, darkness encroaching on the edges of her vision, Samantha knew the price of her victory. She was dying. The spell had taken too much, demanded more than she had to give. She could feel her life force ebbing, her heartbeat slowing, stuttering. But even as the cold crept in, even as the light faded, Samantha felt a strange sense of peace. She had made her choice. She had saved the ones she loved. And in the end, wasn't that all that mattered? Distantly, she heard a voice calling her name, felt hands on her face, her chest. Rowan. Ka. He had found her, pulled her broken body into his arms. Samantha, please. His voice cracked, tears splashing onto her cheeks. Don't leave me. Not now. Not after everything. With the last of her strength, Samantha raised a hand, cupping his jaw. It's all right, she whispered. I'm not afraid. I know, I know you'll find me. In the next life. A sob tore from Rowan's throat, and he pressed his forehead to hers, his tears mingling with her own. I will, he vowed. I'll find you. I'll always find you. Samantha smiled, a last luminous thing, and let her eyes drift shut. She could rest now. Her fight was over. But even as the darkness claimed her, even as her soul slipped free of its mortal tether, Samantha knew this wasn't the end. It was just the beginning of a new chapter, a new story. One where light and shadow danced. One where love conquered all. And in that place between heartbeats, that space between worlds, Samantha made a vow of her own. She would wait for him, for Rowan Dadia. Oh, across time, across distance, across the very fabric of reality. She would wait. And when he found her, when they were reunited, nothing, not even death itself, 
would ever tear them apart again. But fate, it seemed, had other plans. Because in that moment, in a chamber deep beneath Ravenswood, a shadow stirred. A presence, ancient and malevolent, that had been watching, waiting, biding its time. Darius Blackthorn smiled, a cruel slash of a thing, and stepped out of the darkness, his eyes fixed on Samantha's still form. Oh, my dear foolish sister, he murmured, kneeling beside her. Did you really think it would be that easy? That you could escape your fate with a little blood and a pretty speech? His hand drifted to the athame, still wet with Samantha's blood, and he lifted it, admiring the way the light played along the edge. No, Samantha. Your story is far from over. In fact, his smile widened, a glimpse of madness, of hunger. It's only just begun. And with that, he plunged the blade into Samantha's chest, directly over her heart. Blood welled, black in the guttering light, and Samantha's body arched, a ragged gasp tearing from her throat. Her eyes flew open, wide and startled and blazing with an unholy light. The light of a power old as time, dark as sin. The light of the raven, rising from the ashes of its own destruction. Darius threw back his head and laughed, the sound echoing through the chamber, through the halls of Ravenswood, through the very foundations of the world. Welcome back, sister, he said, his voice a dark caress. Welcome to your new life. And as Samantha sat up, as she reached for the athame with hands that no longer shook, as a smile curved her lips, sharp and hungry and full of terrible promise, one thing became crystal clear. The darkness had won, and Ravenswood would never be the same. The raven perched on the windowsill, its feathers glistening like spilled ink in the pale morning light. It watched with keen eyes as the students of Ravenswood filed into the great hall, their faces somber, their whispers hushed. They had come to pay their respects, to say goodbye to the woman who had been their leader, their protector, their friend. Samantha Ray, headmistress of Ravenswood, was dead. Or so they believed. The truth, as ever, was far more complicated. Far darker. Rowan stood at the front of the hall, his face a mask of grief, his eyes hollow. He had barely slept barely eaten, since that fateful night in the hidden chamber. The night he had held Samantha in his arms, felt her life slip away like sand through his fingers. The night Darius had taken her from him, in more ways than one. He could still see it, every time he closed his eyes. Samantha, rising from the pool of her own blood, the athame clutched in her hand. Samantha, her eyes blazing with a light that was at once terrifying and terribly familiar. Samantha, smiling that sharp, hungry smile, as she turned to face him. Rowan, she had purred, her voice a silken caress. My love. My heart. You didn't really think I would leave you, did you? And, and he had known, in that moment, that the woman standing before him was not his Samantha. Not anymore. She was something else. Something ancient and powerful, and utterly, utterly wrong. The darkness he had always sensed lurking beneath the surface, the shadow to her light, had finally broken free. And it would consume them all. Now, staring out at the sea of faces, the students and teachers who looked to him for guidance, for strength, Rowan felt a heaviness settle in his chest. A certainty, cold and leaden. This was just the beginning. The first move in a game he didn't yet understand, a war he wasn't sure he could win. Darius had played his hand, had twisted Samantha into something unrecognizable, and Rowan knew, with a bone-deep surety, that it was only a matter of time before the brothers Blackthorn made their next move. But he also knew, with an equal surety, that he would not stop fighting. He would not give up on Samantha, on the woman he loved. The woman he knew still existed somewhere beneath the darkness. He would find a way to save her, to bring her back to the light. Even if it meant sacrificing everything, even if it meant tearing Ravenswood apart stone by stone, he would not rest until Samantha was free. Until they were together again, the way they were always meant to be. The raven on the windowsill let out a harsh cry, snapping Rowan from his thoughts. He looked up, meeting its bottomless gaze, 
and for a moment, he could have sworn he saw a flicker of something in those obsidian depths. A flicker of recognition, of knowing. A flicker of Samantha. Then the raven spread its wings and took flight, soaring out over the grounds of Ravenswood, a black silhouette against the leaden sky. Rowan watched it go, a fierce, desperate hope kindling in his heart. He would find her. He would save her. No matter the cost. Far away, in a place of shadow and secrets, Samantha Blackthorn opened her eyes. She stretched languidly, reveling in the feel of silk sheets against her bare skin, the hum of power in her veins. Beside her, Darius propped himself up on one elbow, tracing a finger down the curve of her spine. Sleep well, sister mine? Samantha smiled. A wicked, wanton thing. Like the dead, she purred. Darius chuckled, low and dark. And are you ready, my love? Ready to take your rightful place, to claim what is ours by blood and birthright? In answer, Samantha rolled over, straddling him, her hair cascading around them in a crimson curtain. She could feel the pulse of his desire, the throb of his darkness, and it sang to her own, a siren song of lust and power. I'm ready, she breathed, her lips hovering a hair's breadth from his. I'm ready to burn the world down. And as she claimed his mouth in a searing kiss, as they moved together in a dance as old as time, Samantha knew, with a fierce, terrible joy, that nothing would ever be the same. She was the raven, risen from the ashes. She was the darkness given flesh. She was Samantha Blackthorn. And the world would tremble before her.